Hi, I'm Brianna coming at you from the Reagan Scott Homestead, clearly in my cozy clothes, in my cozy office because it is super cold out today in Western North Carolina. I'm coming at you with a rather lengthy video to discuss what you should grow in your 2024 garden that's in a zone seven space. Because it's so long, feel free to skip ahead in this video and right on down to the show notes where I will have each one of the areas that we're discussing today and you can just skim right on through if you're trying to find the best tomato or the best squash or the best pepper, they're all down in there. Um, but for those of you that just wanna listen and follow along for all 10, we'll be going through, like I said, the top 10 things, every one of which I grew in my garden in zone 7b in Asheville, North Carolina last year. Uh, for those of you avid gardeners, I have the heavy clay soil. Um, some people in Western North Carolina have the mica silty soil. I did not get that lucky. So um, I have heavily worked on it with a mixture of composts over the years, but it's still pretty sticky soil. Um, for those of you that aren't avid gardeners and don't care about that, you know, skip right on to the varieties. These work very well in a zone seven garden in Appalachian Mountains, which means for those of you that are trying to go look at that, if you're zone six or zone eight, um, what we have here is a lot of rainfall, um, cool temperatures at night, and then hot and humidity, especially in July and August. Um, with a semi-short growing season, really only from May until mid-October. So if you're trying to kind of find a similar one, um, the Pacific Northwest is very similar, um, but without quite the heat that we get um, during the summer. What you'll find out in this video is I will go through um, what I grew in 2023. I filmed this back in August, right kind of at the near end of the growing season, um, when I had a good idea of both my top pick and my runner up. And um, as I mentioned, we'll go through most of the main vegetables that you would grow in there. Uh, I did film my fails as well. I'm not sure if I'll add them to it. It'll really depend on the runtime of this. Um, but like I said, skip to the show notes, go check those out, and I will give you links to where we get our varieties as well. Um, do note, I am not getting any money from any of these seed companies, though if they'd like to change that, feel free to contact me. Um, but these are things that I buy with our own money, we grow ourselves, and I can promise you that they do work. Um, most of them I have grown for multiple seasons. Um, some of them, it was my first year last year and was just really impressed with the performance. So let's follow along. And um, if you have any questions, please add them in the comments. I am happy to answer them. And also, if you're growing in a zone seven or the Appalachian Mountains and you found a variety that really works, especially any kind of pumpkin, I'm still doing a good search for those that fight the squash vine borer. Um, please put it in the comments, especially that pumpkin. I've got a good squash now, good summer and winter one that we'll put in here, but the pumpkin, still looking. Thanks again for watching and I hope to hear from you all. 2023 was the year of the pepper, which was great for me. Um, I've always had really good luck doing spicy peppers, but mm, kind of lackluster results on the sweet bells, which I love. But this year, I figured out the varieties that work well with my home. Um, so first, up here, um, the smaller pepper that we're going to look at is the Peladin, and I would say it is the star of 2023. It's a hybrid pepper. Um, my seed was from Johnny's Select, and it is my first producer up front um, of a green to red bell pepper. You can see here I've got a red one underneath. Um, I have another bed of peppers in full sun and have been getting red and green peppers for weeks now. Then my runner-up is also a hybrid pepper, and I have to actually write this one down. I call it the SV. Um, it's this taller one here. Uh, it has matured after the Paladin, but does a gold pepper, and it is the, here we go, folks, SVPB8415. If you're ordering it from Johnny's Select Seed, that's the hybrid name. Finally, um, not shown here, but looking almost exactly in the same size and growth pattern as the Paladin, um, just with, I would say, smaller fruits and less of them is the King of the North. That is an heirloom pepper from Baker Creek. So this year I would honestly recommend three varieties. Um, they have all matured in our slower, um, less growing season that we have in the zone 6B, 7A area. 
and they have all made delicious green peppers but still have had enough time to start ripening into red and gold when you have a completely full sun area though these will also ripen up before the frost come in october we have a big flea beetle problem and you can probably still see the damage to these leaves and so eggplants always get attacked um, I have tried diatomaceous earth, lots of different, you know, organic sprays, different types. And I think I found the eggplant that works for me uh, because it just seems to outpace the flea beetles. So what we have here, and if I um, butcher this Italian, not my, not my language. Um, it's a Listata de Guardia, Gar Guardia maybe. Um, I'll put it in the show notes and I'm so thrilled with it. Let's see if I can get a picture of it. And if not, I will move in and let you take a look. Um, but it does these lovely little striped eggplants. And while I haven't had a kitchen to cook, my mother said they are fantastic. Uh, Sweet-ish, not, they don't have the bitterness that you can sometimes get with eggplants, even when they get larger. And um, soft, very thin skin. So let me zoom in and let you take a look at these. So as you can see here, the flea beetle damage is pretty significant, but even as small starts that I started from the greenhouse, they outpace the flea beetles. And um, in here, you can see the beautiful striping, lovely purple. Um, and each one of my plants has been this productive. I picked them all and gave them to my mother, but they're just doing a whole nother set. So super happy, definitely doing these again next year. Uh, many of you have heard my woes about growing cucumbers, but if you want a cucumber relation with insane growth, then I cannot tell you enough about the Mexican sour gherkin. Uh, my kids adore these. As you can see here, it will grow in shade. Uh, it will grow on everything. It will eat an entire bed and possibly your children if they were to stand still long enough. But what's really cool is even in shade, this giant sprawling vine of craziness mixed tons and tons of teeny tiny little sour cucumbers. Let's go pick a few. All right, so here's an example of one of the tiny cucumbers that it makes. Um, also, if you just start digging in here, there everywhere through here. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, it will self-seed. Uh, I just saw a couple more in here and I think I knocked them off because uh, I desperately need to pick this. See, here we go. There's more. There's another one. Uh, <laughs> there's even more. Yeah, definitely need to pick these. Uh, I'm thinking about trying to make a pickle with them, uh, but again, no kitchen. So I'll get the kids started on these because they just feast. Behold, the Rampacante squash. This is by far my go-to squash now because I have vine borers worse than I have flea beetles. And I tried everything. I did the injection with BT, the spraying with BT, the covering the root and um, base of it with tin foil. I have tried everything. And regardless, the squash tend to get eaten by the vine borers. And more so, um, we have trouble with the mildew because this is pretty much a temperate rainforest. Uh, but this lovely giant vine, as you can see here, goes all the way back here at this point in the summer. Here's the end. Um, and wraps around the garden. Is fantastic. And it grows. We'll see if you can see it all the way back there. One of these giant long squash. And the squash get about this big. Um, I don't have any right now because I just harvested them all uh, to give to my mother because that's who I give all my produce to with no kitchen. Uh, but this is super productive. Couple tips if you are going to grow this one, you will need to trellis it. I can't get it to fruit very well until it's up. Uh, but I definitely let some vines trail on the ground so that when it gets squash vine borer, it will put out more roots. But I can't tell you, if you have squash vine borer or you have issues with mildew and mold this baby keeps on pumping and look at these beautiful leaves like they have very few holes in them um yeah i saw some squash beetles 
I killed some larvae, but they just don't love this variety. I, it's great. I have never kept it until it's a winter squash, but in theory, the Rampicante squash can be grown to, and they'll harden off to winter squash, but tasty. It's as good as zucchini. It's as good as your yellow squash. It's maybe not quite as productive, but you can leave them on there till they get this long and they're still soft and tender when you cook them up and the skins aren't too bad, nor are the seeds. So hands down, number one squash. The runner up um, is the black uh, Utsu, which was, I believe from Baker Creek. I know the Rambicante was, I can't find this one anywhere else. Um, and it is my runner up because I forgot that I planted it in some of the beds all the way across the yard. Uh, same thing, it puts down roots uh, on along its vine and it has a solid core vine uh, so that it can fight the squash vine borers. It is a winter squash and they look like tiny little black pumpkins. I'll go get a picture of one, make sure you can see it. But that's my runner up because I forgot about it and it did not succumb to the beetles or the squash vine borers either. I haven't tasted that one yet, so I cannot guarantee that the flavor is good like I can this one but this is a staple. And the next year I will make sure not to ignore that one as long as it tastes good. Uh, when those are all cured during the frost, we'll cook some up with my mom and see what the flavor is. But this one every year, you just need a good amount of space, but it also does well if you cut it. Um, so I think you could keep it to maybe one panel smaller and still get some good production out of it. Uh, just trim off the male blossoms. It has a tendency to set too many of those uh, cut two or three, leave a couple, and then the females will start coming out. Uh, I did that last week and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six new female squash coming out on this. And this is late. This is mid August. Ask anyone that grows squash in Western North Carolina in August. This is one I planted in May and it still looks this amazing. Like that's unheard of. They all succumb to mildew and look sad and they've been eaten alive by bugs. And this baby, second year, this is the second year I've gotten this much growth. They're fantastic. We'll grow this variety every year. Um, hopefully I can save seeds off of this um, and try and get my own. But if not, I'll order another pack from Baker Creek just to make sure I have more. Since I hadn't finished editing my video, I just thought I would show you how quickly the squash does grow um in a week so yeah as you can see they get really long and tall and they are still quite soft and edible even when they get three and four feet in length so i'm thinking i might actually let a couple of them go to winter squash and see what that's like this year but here you go tomatoes are looking rough because that's how we roll in western north carolina in august if your tomatoes haven't 100% succumbed to blight by this point, you're feeling pretty good about it. Uh, so I have my number one producer of tomatoes this year. And I have been looking for five years for tomatoes that I felt like I wanted to grow again. And unfortunately, one of them was a hybrid. I don't love that with tomatoes because they're so easy to save seed from. Um, but I also got real tired of wilt and blight. So let's take a look. All right, so this is the Pink Wonder, which is still a Pink Wonder. Um, as you can see, it's covered even with some blight showing uh, with these lovely tomatoes that have minimal cracking and solid flavor. And it's a hybrid from Johnny's Select Seed. Uh, fantastic, super happy with this, will grow next year don't care. Now the sad thing that I'm taking out probably today was an heirloom and it was the big rainbow from Baker Creek. And while it did succumb to blight, it lasted longer than any of the heirlooms I've ever grown. And the flavor was fantastic. So sadness in the look, but I've been looking for a slicing tomato that could make it through the wilt. And I ate the last one of these a week ago. So it did good. It was producing until almost a week ago. And uh, yeah, so Pink Wonder, definitely. Um, and the Big Rainbow Heirloom 
grow on both of those again next year. So happy to finally have my tomatoes that I will keep growing in my garden. All right, one of the newest plants that I will add to my rotation from 2023 on was actually an accident. So if you ever order from Baker Creek Seed, um, whenever you order a certain amount of seed, they send you free seed. And it comes like this, usually with a big free seed uh, packet on it. And this year, they actually, I get enough for two, but they sent me the same thing twice, which generally would have been a little bit of a disappointment except I have never grown. Um, this is an Asian green called Mizuna. I may have just butchered that. Um, Bini Husa, I think is how you say it. Hausa? I have no idea how you say it, but it'll be in the show notes. Uh, this was fantastic. I love bok choy. In fact, that's my runner up. Hold on, I will show you my bok choy, which was the Suzhu baby. This is my runner up when I'm talking about Asian uh, greens. Love bok choy. Finally figured out how to grow it after all these years by starting it really early in the spring. And actually, in these beds behind me, I am trying it fall this year. So that's how much I liked it, both of these. Uh, but after my bok choy had started to bolt and was getting picked over, the Mizuna was still going strong. Sautés lovely, gets good thick stalks, um, kind of similar profile when it's been sautéed. So prolific, grows so easy, doesn't bolt nearly as fast. Uh, just, I was just all in all shocked. It was tasty, it was delicious. I will grow this one every year moving forward. Also, just recently started for fall, so I can't really show you, but was a super favorite in 2023, was also from Baker Creek. Um, it was Gustav's uh, salad lettuce. So it's a butterhead lettuce, and uh, it was just super buttery and soft. If you've never had a butterhead lettuce, uh, definitely consider growing one. They grow, you know, probably about this size, like a handful um, lettuce heads and they're soft and the leaves are just like a buttery silky texture um, and it was delicious and the pest left it alone pretty well I love the size too I am the lettuce fan in our family my kids are still at the really enjoy iceberg phase of their lives um, so it was like a good salad size just for me for lunch on any given day um, but then as my runner up, which I will probably also grow going forward. All right, I'm gonna try to say this, but it's gonna be sad. For Ellen Schlosch? <laughs> I'm just gonna hold it up. Uh, it was a speckled lettuce. I thought it was a butterhead until I was getting ready to add this to my list for 2023. It's a romaine, but it was soft and delicious. And again, like I actually thought this was a butterhead that just grew in a little more upright structure. Mm -mm. Nope, it's a romaine type, but fantastic. Crispy, fresh, good, and then the actual leaves themselves were that kind of buttery, soft, delicious flavor. And um, it's fun because it's got speckles. So these were my top two. I will definitely grow these again, um, as well as my usual romaine and iceberg that the kids love. And something red because it's pretty. Um, but these are my go-tos. So you'll have to excuse the audio here. It got um, lost with this particular video, but the pea that we're talking about today is a Royal Snap Pea. I had gotten a three pack from Johnny Select Seed, uh, Royal Snap, Honey Snap, and just Sugar Snap Pea uh, because, you know, we just love snap peas. And I was very impressed by these. You'll see that they look kind of grayish seeds, um, but really they're a purple pea um, and they have very tender pods. And the big thing that I love about them is the lack of space they need. Um, you can see here, I have little fall seedlings going. Um, they need very, very light trellising and they would be perfect for small spaces. You can even do these in containers because um, they just don't get very big, but they have really pretty soft little purple pods and they were tasty. But if you have more space for your peas, then absolutely consider the traditional sugar snap pea. You know, I tried to get away from it. I bought a different one several years in a row. I ordered it as just part of the set from Johnny's with the royal peas and yep, it was great. 
the kids loved them, snap them all off. I'm not entirely sure that they ever even made it inside, uh, but they do need trellising, uh, unlike the Royal Pea that can do with very minimal trellising. So that's my second runner up. If you've got the room for it, then just your traditional sugar snap pea is still a winner, even in 2023. All right, let's talk about onions. Um, and I will show you what I have left over. Uh, my top pick, and I don't have a second runner up for this, is the Globo onion. Um, it is an onion that I picked up from Baker Creek two years ago and let me tell you why that's my pick all right no judgment on the state of my potting shed right now because we have a reno going on so everything's jammed in here but as you can see um, i still have lots of onions left not huge ones but these are good sized onions um and i grew all these from seed late and that's huge because if you work with onions, you know, growing them from seed and getting an onion in a single year is a little difficult. Usually people do onion sets. Um, but even more impressive is that I was late putting these out. I forgot about them. I never fertilized them. And to top it all off, the seed was two to three years old. I think it was 2001 and this is 2023. So two year old seed. Onion seed does not last. Germination rates usually dive bomb after a year or so. But this has been great. So it's an heirloom called Globo Onion. Um, and I will order fresh seed be, and actually take care of them next year because they are also very tasty. They're a nice crisp white onion. A little bit sweet, but not, you know, Vidalia sweet. Uh, but still, really good, tasty, solid. You can add them to almost any recipe where onions are called for and get a good oniony flavor. Um, not too sharp, not too sweet. Fantastic growth. And you can start them from seed um, in a year and come out with onions. Okay. So this is going to be the funniest video to show anyone when you're talking about something you want to plant again next year. Um, but these soybeans, I'm drying them to get the seeds out and I missed a few. I grabbed some of those yesterday, um, to get these. They were fantastic. I didn't get to eat any of the edamame, which is why we're growing edamame, edamame varieties. Uh, cause that's one of our kids' favorite, but, um, I actually had it, another one just sprout from some of the seed that I dropped. So uh, just prolific. I mean, look at the one that's still good here. It's great. Um, and really good pods coming through. I grew two varieties. And I'd say the two soybean varieties were really a tie. They were Midori and Triple Play. And both of them honestly set about the same amount of pods. Uh, they had about the same vigorous growth. I ordered them just off Etsy because I forgot to add a mommy to any of our orders. And um, sure, why not go get some from another grower um, and try it out? So they were real cheap and they were great. So I'm saving my own seed this year for those and we'll plant next year when I have a kitchen and I can easily steam them. The California giant Xenia, 100% gonna grow this one again. Um, as you can see behind me, they're giant and the butterflies love them and they're so easy to grow from seed. I mean, look at the size of some of these compared to me. They're amazing. They make great cut flowers and the bees and tiny little butterflies as you can see here, are on them all day long. So while we are on the topic of non-vegetable plants that I will grow again, I guess this is technically a food plant, but most people don't use it this way. This is Job's Tears. Uh, I grow this one every year because it's fun. And my great grandmother used to make beaded necklaces from these. Um, technically this is a grain and in some countries you can eat it, but, uh, a lot of times it's used in crafts. So as you can see here, here's one that's almost done. They just slide off. And when they do, they have a little hole in them that you can thread as a bead. And um, they're real hard and you can use them as beads. And they're just so much fun. I save the seeds from mine every year. I grow them and they grow easily. Uh, the only thing I do know is occasionally the squirrels decide they like them. Uh, but usually it sets so many fun little seeds to make little beads with and you just, 
pull them off. They come off that easy. And then they have the holes already pre-made in them for these beautiful bead bracelets. Really hope you enjoyed our recommendations uh, for what you might want to grow in your garden in 2024. Uh, as we wrap up the gardening season in 2023, it's great to start planning. I would love to hear any varieties you guys have had, especially sweet corn and cucumbers, um, in the comments. And hope you come back. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and share it along. Thanks.